Talks on the old pension scheme are doing the rounds in the ongoing elections. Most of the speeches are government employee centric. Elections are going on in only some states, but this issue is quite national. If given a chance, you can bluntly ask the political parties if they will restore the old pension scheme after being elected to power. So, why was NPS, that is the new pension system was implemented in the first place? Let's first understand the difference between the current pension system and the previous one. Before the implementation of the NPS, when a government employee used to retire, his pension used to be computed and would come to 50% of his last drawn salary. He used to get his pension throughout his life on this basis. Whether the employee had worked for 10 years or 25 years, his pension would be computed on this basis throughout his life. It gave definite advantage to the employees. This means the burden of pension used to fall on the budget of the governments. But as this kept on putting pressure on the budget, the government of India launched the national pension system on January 1, 2004. The pension is currently being calculated under the NPS for all central government employees barring those who belong to the defence sector. States were also asked to voluntarily implement the NPS. With the exception of West Bengal, all the states have rolled on the NPS. Under the NPS, the responsibility of computation of the pension also lies on the shoulders of the employees. For this, 10% of the basic salary and DA of the state government employee is deducted to contribute towards his pension. The state government also contributes equivalent amount to the employee's NPS account. However, the central government employees contribute 14% of the basic salary and the DA. After retirement, the employee can withdraw 60% of total accumulated amount in a lump sum manner. Annuity is purchased from an insurance company with the remaining 40%. The pension is computed on the basis of this 40%. Currently, government employees don't really have any idea of how much their pension would be. Now let's see why people are protesting against NPS. In the traditional system, employees got the benefit of GPF. Whenever an employee retires, he gets a hefty amount. The GPF option is not there in the new pension system. Under the traditional system, no amount is deducted from the salary of the employee to calculate his pension. But now, 10% of the salary is being deducted every month to contribute to the pension corpus. The NPS is similar to any mutual fund scheme. NPS doesn't guarantee any return. It is quite definite that the pension you will receive is dependent on the stock market and the insurance companies. In the traditional system, the pension was being paid from the government treasury. Pensioners also get the benefit of dearness allowance and pay commissions at the end of every six months. In OPS, gratuity of up to Rs 20 lakh is available at the time of retirement. If an employee dies during the course of his service, there is a provision of family pension in NPS too but the amount deposited in the NPS account is forfeited by the government in the case of the demise of the employee. In the previous system, there was a 40% commutation of the pension. This means the employee can withdraw a lump sum amount by selling 40% of his pension. Employees also get benefit of health facilities under the OPS, whereas there is no such provision in NPS. Before you trust the promises been made in the elections, First, understand the fact that the new system of pension was implemented because of the ever-rising burden on the budgets of the central and state governments. A 2018-19 report of the CARE rating says that the total expenditure of the government on the salary of government employees is about Rs 3.23 lakh crore. This is equal to 13% of the total budget expenditure. While total expenditure on pension is Rs 2.77 lakh crore. This constitutes 11% of the budget expenditure. The pension bill is already equivalent to 86% of the salary bill and the former is expected to eclipse the latter very soon. State budgets are also under huge pressure. Uttar Pradesh spends 24% of its annual budget on meeting salaries and pension expenditures. This expenditure is 34% in case of Rajasthan and 31% in case of Maharashtra while Himachal Pradesh's expenditure on salaries and pensions is equivalent to 50% of its budget. Government employees will queue up as voters in the election. This is the reason why parties are making such promises even after being aware of the condition of the state budgets.